So here's an interesting thought that came to me um, a couple of days ago and it's with regards to Jesus the son of Mary. Um, now as you know in the Quran, or you may know, um, the first miracle is that he spoke as a baby. You know, he was literally newborn and he started speaking just like I'm speaking now. Um, obviously in baby form and probably with a squeaky voice, presumably. <laughs> Wasn't it there, so can't tell you about what his voice sounded like. And um, the point is, you see, which people perhaps don't think about, um, and they just pass over, is that <clears throat> he was going to be doing that for the next 20 years and beyond. So if you imagine you're his mother and you've got this little baby that's, you know, it's sucking milk or whatever it is, and it's, it's basically talking like me <laughs> or talking like you. Not just that, he's getting revelation as well, you know, so the, the gospel, you know, not what people call the gospels now, but actually the gospel from his own lips, that was coming as well. You're going to have two camps of people, aren't you? <clears throat> you know, from the regular people in the street, what they're going to think. You're going to have people thinking, this is weird. <laughs> uh, that baby's possessed. And then you're going to have people thinking, oh, wow, you know, this is amazing, you know, um... And actually listening to the message and taking it on face value, the message that's coming across. Um, and of course, his people never accepted him, you know, en masse as a whole. That was the case, always the case with prophets. So he was never accepted, you know. Um, and he, he himself claimed, you know, he said, I'm the Messiah. Um, but they didn't accept him, um, probably by virtue of the fact that he didn't have a father, you know. Um, there is a term for that, an implied term, which I'm not going to use, but um, he literally didn't have a father um, because he was born of a, a miracle. Um, and so his mother, you know, she if you look at her situation, she went from she 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 actually used to live in the, the Holy of the Holies, which was like it's like a room in the temple. The only the high priest ever went in, nobody else ever went in there and he had all the religious artifacts and relics and things. And nobody was allowed in there apart from the high priest, which is Zachariah. And he'd been put in charge of Mary. And she just used to stop there and pray. And obviously because Zachariah was looking after her, she became the most learned person in the whole of whole of the lands, yeah? And um, he was surprised. You know, one day he, he went into the, the Holy of the Holies and she was there with food. But the food was out of season. And it was like, you know, like we go to the supermarket and we get... We'll get tangerines and we get cucumber and strawberries and all these things and we don't think about it. We just go and buy them. We assume they're going to be there. They have to actually come from a land which can actually grow those particular those particular items uh, because some of them will, will actually grow here. You know, it's not hot enough. Um, they, if they, if we were to grow them here, they would be seasonal. But yet she was getting them, these things out, definitely out of season, fresh. And so Zachary said... Uh, yeah, Mary, man, like he had her, you know, Mary, where, where did you get these from? And she says, well, I asked the Lord and the Lord provided. Um, so this was the type of person that you were dealing with with Mary. She was obviously chaste and learned and she just devoted herself to God, you know, to um, remembering, remembering Allah. Um, and then at one point, Angel Gabriel came and said, you're going to have a son. You know, uh, Allah, you know, announces to you the birth of a son. And she said, how can I have a son when no man has touched me? And so Gabriel said, even so, when Allah decrees the matter, he says to it be and it is, kun fire kun. Um, so when the, you know, obviously when it, it started to, show you know that she was pregnant then she disappeared you know she she ran out of town basically um and then when it came time for her to to give birth um the pain was so much that she she wished that she was dead she died and so um she was advised allah told her or well, through through an intermediary uh through um uh, or she she heard a voice saying to her you know, take yourself to the to the trunk of this palm tree and pull it towards yourself. Um, and it all, you know, fresh dates will, will fall upon you. And you've got to wonder because 
here's a woman who's in extreme pain and yet she's been asked to do such a strenuous thing. Palm trees are solid things. They're not things that you actually pull towards yourself, yeah? They're very strong. But in, even in that weakened state, what Allah was saying to her is try and then, you know, you will get something. So anyway, she gave birth to Jesus and went back to the people. Um, and the people are amazed. They're saying, what is this Mary? You know, you, you know you're not married and... You know, you've got this baby and all she did was she pointed to the child and he spoke and he says, Inni Abdullahi Ataniel Kitabu Jalani Nabiya. That, you know, indeed, you know, um, Allah has made me a prophet and um, he's given me the book and made me a prophet. Yeah. And he goes on to say other things and I'll leave the link to actually the, the chapter which talks about this, this matter in detail. Um, below in the description um, but yeah so for you've got to imagine that she from being like the number one girl you know in the whole of the whole of the land she goes to to this situation you know and this is how Allah tests people you see you know he can test whoever he wants however he wants and she had to put up with that you know this what people call this possessed baby you know talking um, for up until his, his young adulthood, you know, 20 years. And then obviously Allah took him to himself, you know. You know, Allah says that the, um, they said in, 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 they said as a joke, you know, oh, we've killed Jesus, the son of Mary, Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah. They said that as a joke, as a, a jest, as a, a slight, because they didn't believe he was the messenger of Allah. Um, but Allah says, no, you didn't kill him and you didn't crucify him, but he was made to appear to you that happened, but we took him to ourselves. So, Jesus is up in the heaven at the moment and obviously he's going to come back fairly soon uh, according to indications. Um, so yeah, um, just interesting. Just imagine you're one of those people around at that time and this happens, you know. Just imagine your life from that point onwards, what sort of things that, you know, obviously you've got a family and, you know, you talk about various things. What, what sort of conversations would... Um, emanate or occur around that particular subject if it got brought up or if it got raised you know you're going down to the market and you saw this child you know you know the demon baby um, I'm not saying I believe it was a demon baby but this is the type of idea you can imagine that the devil was whispering to people um, and it's it's just that it's not something which is picked up or something which people really consider you know they'll, they'll recite the verses of the Quran which is very nice to recite but not really give much thought or go into it, you know, what actually was going on at that time, you know, what in essence it actually meant. Um, and I just thought it was a good subject to bring up, you know, to, to make people think about that. So anyway, as, as I said, I'll leave the, the link to the, the, the relevant part of the Quran in the section, in the description below. Um, and see you soon.